Now, yes, hi. Uh, hello. Um, How's it going? Good. Welcome, everyone, to Wealth Tidbit Stories. My name is Araceli, and I'm a transition wealth advisor. I love help helping professional women to rearrange their finances so they can get ahead quicker, retire faster, right? And remove all the fear that they have about managing their finances. And as you see, like I always talk about helping women, but what about men, right? So right. exactly. So a man also go through difficult transitions in life. And today I have a very good friend of mine, uh, Mike Popovici. He is a, a spiritual guide and a life catalyst. He's going to tell you a little bit about what he does. But most importantly, so I met Mike actually when I was working as an engineer. He's also an engineer by trade. And I never really thought that he was going to leave. And actually, he left the corporate work just a little bit before I did. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that a, a lot of people have is this fear about moving from the corporate world going into your own business. Mm. So today, Mike is going to tell us what he did, how he prepared financially and otherwise. And, you know, tell us, Mike, who you are today and how did you make the transition from the corporate world to what you're doing today? I oh, think I'm happy to. And thank you, Araceli, for having me on on your on your show, if you will. And um, I'm, I'm super excited to share. And it's interesting. Yeah, you're saying that we, we got to know each other in the engineering world. And um, I didn't know all the amazing things you had cooking in the background. I think we both <laughs> kind of hid that from each other, right? We, we, yeah. didn't, we didn't like openly talk about it necessarily. Yeah. Right? And then all of a sudden I find out Araceli left. And by the way, she's a wealth advisor and a real estate investor. I'm like, holy crow. So <laughs> good on you if I only would have known, right? <laughs> so uh, what I ended up, you know, I, I reached a point where I realized um, why I loved engineering. And I loved engineering because I used to heal stuff. I used to make processes and products yeah. better. I didn't know this until... I started going on my own journey of healing myself because everything inside of me crashed. Like a lot of people don't know this because having they, they used to see me and, and you know they say with mental health on the outside everything looks okay on the mm -hmm. inside is an absolute war zone disaster. That's kind of what I was going through and uh, not kind of exactly what I was going through. I was having conversations with people in the hallways and everything was so broken up inside of me that I couldn't even hear what the other person was saying. I could hear the individual words, but I couldn't piece together the sentences. I was, everything was like I was in a fishbowl. And I, I, I realized, of course, that I wasn't able to, I wouldn't be able to continue on like this. And I had a team of 30 people reporting into me at that time. I had to, I had to fix it. I was at that time still quality supervisor. And then I made it the quality manager and then I left. Uh, so I realized through the journey of healing myself that the reason I loved engineering is because I healed stuff and I was actually more, I, I felt my purpose was to help people heal themselves. And that's when I realized I needed to leave my job. And so around that time was also when my marriage wasn't working out anymore. And, and I said to myself, I said, you know what, I'm going to make this happen. I'm going to do this. Uh, and I told, you know, the, the day my boss gave me my raise is the day I told him I'm going to leave. <laughs> Wow. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. I didn't know that. So I know, but the, the reason that the show is here is because we've been talking a lot about with women, right? Mm. And women are more willing to share mm. uh, their emotions and what they're going through. And it's really good to see that someone, um, you know, a, a male is actually going through also transitions and that they're going through emotions uh, in to make a change. So Thank yeah. you, Mike, for sharing. This is uh, something that, you know, we don't see very often. And I think more men are starting to realize that they need to make a change and be more embraced into their own feelings. Absolutely. Right. And, and you know, we won't get in too much into that. That's another topic altogether. But yeah. we you know the way we were raised in our generation and before it was, you know, if an emotion came up as a man, you had to hit it over the head. You couldn't you couldn't do anything about That's that. That's right. Yeah. Part of my healing journey needed me to come into touch with that. And, and so when I finally, when I decided it was time to leave, 
um, because you asked, you know, how did I prepare for it, right? Mm -hmm. I, you know, I looked at my finances, I don't, I don't know how many times, you know, how much money do I have saved? What do I have in my reserves just in case? Mm -hmm. um, what are my options? And at that time, you know what? I wish I would have known a transition wealth advisor, Araceli, <laughs> because, <laughs> because at that time I was flying by myself and I had uh, some some uh, wealth advisors come to me, one in particular that, you know, had all the greatest intentions, but didn't really understand how to dynamically, dynamically set me up to be ready and to be able to ride the waves of leaving the old, stable, mm -hmm. certain, safe paycheck, regular paycheck mm -hmm. to becoming an entrepreneur. And, and he was employing the traditional sort of tools without really understanding how to, how to help me and yeah. how to set me up in the right way. Yeah, so it's everybody is so that. different when it comes down to that because it, it, it is only not taken into consideration the rules that financial planners follow, right? But also the person, right? And that is completely is so individual. Uh, mm -hmm. The pace that you implement things and also the type of advice that you give. And that's one of the things that I really realized that is it's not a cookie cutter that you just go there, they give you products and they tell you do this and you're done, right? Mm -hmm. It's it's a process. And that's why now I help people starting from the budget to what is it that you they, they need to do in order to accomplish what they want to go through. And we go slow, right? Instead of just come in and these are your products, way to go, bye-bye, I don't see you anymore. So that is uh, that's a good point, Mike. So tell me, how did you cope after you became an entrepreneur, what happened? What were the feelings that, you know, not having a paycheck, all of that kind of thing? <laughs> well, this is the real interesting part, right? This is, this is where things get fun in a, in a really weird way. Uh, I, you know, when I left my job, I felt so aligned. Everything was like, yes, I'm going to do exactly what I've been meaning to do. And the world is going to benefit and everything is going to be fantastic. And the moment I sat down to write my posts and share my knowledge and information, everything inside of me said, no. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, what? I mean, I literally, everything inside of me refused to move forward. So what was holding you back, Mike? My fears. The th I thought what I did was exactly what I needed to do. It was. And yet... I, when I finally did it, I got hit smack right into fears I never actually knew existed for me to begin with. Wow. Right. And it, it, it actually started bringing out of me fears of communicating, uh, different fears around communication, different fears around taking the reins and being quote unquote solo, because there's a thing that when you, when you transition as a, as an entrepreneur, there's a feeling of soloness i guess not in a mm -hmm. bad way but it can be so there's a part of your mind that goes oh no i just realized i don't have my regular paycheck mm -hmm. oh no every minute that i have is valuable <laughs> right oh i can't <laughs> waste the time and i have to understand how to structure my time yeah. how to value my time and not just that be okay with telling other people that i value my time which is exactly what i needed to teach other people so then I came head to head with like living what I knew I wanted to teach other people. Right? When, I, <laughs> when, when you're in that safety, there is a safety net with, yeah. with the corporate world um, that you don't realize you're, you're taking advantage of. And at the same time, it's also taking advantage of you. Absolutely. I, I'm totally, I can't totally resonate with you because I went through the same thing for a few years before I actually got the courage to do it because that fluctuation of income I think is that safety that you say is safety but it really isn't because you really are robbing yourself from uh, the experience to do more of what you want to do and also the income potential because even though as engineers we make good money but there is other alternatives there is mm -hmm. not the only way plus you also control your own time and your income at the same time, you want to make more then you work more, right? Yeah. 
And the thing is, it, 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 there is a level of self mastery that now has to come through because before the, the, oh, the paycheck that happened before. Mm -hmm. So now you really, I mean, even, you know, you're, we're all adults. We, we feel like we have a level of self mastery over ourselves. And yet when we hit that entrepreneurial world, it gets tested real quick. Absolutely. <laughs> and this isn't, this isn't, you know, discouragement. This is actually a beautiful thing. Actually, somebody said to me once, and I didn't really understand, right? If you want to master yourself, they said, become an entrepreneur. And I said, man, nah, whatever. That's just a bunch of like, yeah. elitist, nose up in the air kind of mentality, right? Entrepreneurs think so highly of themselves. Yeah. It, it, it is true, right? And, and part of where the, the, what we need to do as entrepreneurs is, the challenge and get the support in the places where we feel that we are we got that internal resistance that we can't get we couldn't I, I couldn't communicate with people properly it took me needing to overcome my insecurities uh and sometimes we can do it quickly sometimes we need to go in there a little deeper and we need to clear out the old beliefs mm -hmm. right and when they talk about those limiting beliefs you come head to head with those when you become an entrepreneur right uh in, in a very powerful and empowering way it's just that we have to see it that way, right? So at first, I literally felt like my insides were saying, I'm not doing this, I'm not moving anywhere. And I was like, you know, the, the, I'm gonna give you a little bit of sample of my internal talk track, if that's okay. Yeah, right? it's fine, yeah. Yeah, so my internal talk track, I'm in front of that computer and I can still, you know, I'm still, I can still see it in front of the computer and I want to write. And I know I have an idea of what I want to write and everything in me was like, nope, nope. It's like, I literally, I couldn't move my fingers. And, and you know what we're taught is push through right so i tried pushing through and the harder i pushed through the louder it got it's like yeah push through a little bit it's like nope push through a little more no push through more and it became this like resounding refusing no yeah was, uh, so nuts. what did you do to overcome that mike because i i know what you do because i i've worked with you and mm -hmm. believe me if you've never experienced uh, a session with Mike, you really need to do that. Um, but um, I want you to tell the audience, you know, what is it that you did, you know, from the things that you do now that some other people can benefit from? Uh, it, it was, on, it was, it's a little tougher to do it on yourself. When I was doing it, I was doing it on myself. Mm -hmm. And I was actually going to get help from other people. So going into the regressions, into the, what, where my beliefs set in it's not about living in the past we don't mm -hmm. want to start digging up and living it's about going into the where the beliefs set in where the fears set in uh where the aversions and helping that version of you reconcile so you can realize that that's not part of you and you can let go right so i help people do that and then having the tools to be able to then have your own empowerment, of course, because you know you're you're the one living your entrepreneurial dream, right? So you to give you to have the tools. So knowing how to work with your body's energy, learning how to work with your mental energy, learning how to work with your emotional energy, learning how to balance that, how to clear that, how to reset yourself. It's you know, the mental stresses are different in corporate and they're different in entrepreneurial. In both situations, we still yeah. need the tools, but we're not given those tools. Nobody teaches us those tools. And so I had to employ the tools firsthand, um, which I was, you know, I'd already known for about 10 years before that, but now I was really putting them to use. Like, it's mm -hmm. like, okay, let's test this now properly. Now you have no choice, right? So, <laughs> no choice. So, so I, I help people with that as well. And then it, it's, uh, there's other techniques that unlock the subconscious potential. And those techniques really help create a powerful shift as well. So there's, it's a whole family, you know, it takes a village to help us evolve. It takes a whole family of understanding and, and tools and techniques, a whole village of that. And um, that's what I use. And I help, I help you let go of what's holding you back and step into that version of you that you know is there. But for some reason, you're having a hard time accessing. Right. Um, yeah. Yeah. I think that at some point or another, Mike, we all have this resistance to change. Mm -hmm. I think it's, first of all, natural to humans, but also we have some things inside of us that they're not allowing us to do this. And I tell you, when I started to become an entrepreneur, the same, that fear of not having a paycheck, that fear of calling people, talking to people, and you have this resistance and 
sometimes you have this doubt inside of you that it doesn't, oh my God, would I be able to help them, right? And even though you know that you can, still you have that little doubt of this little voice talking to you, right? Saying, oh, no, no, I don't think that I can do anything for them, right? Mm -hmm. So we have to overcome this. And I think that all of these things that we don't see yeah. are the things that really kind of separate. And because we don't see them, then you, we don't know what to do. And some of us are so deep inside of you that unless somebody like Mike is working with you, help you extract all of these and just kind of throw them out, right? Like just yeah. go, 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 go. Because if you don't do that, then you're not going to be able to move forward and possibly fail in your business, right? Mm -hmm. So tell me, what would you tell other men that sometimes they're not really that much open to this kind of spiritual guiding uh, mm -hmm. thing? What would you do as, as, a, as a, you know, as a man um, I see a lot of women that they're very, they're not more open to this, but men are like, nah, I don't think I need this kind of thing. So what would you tell them? It, 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 it's always, you know, unique to the individual. However, as a whole group, as a broad mm -hmm. group, um, the things that make you mentally tired and the things that make you reactive to where you might blow a deal because you can't, you know, you're, you're getting, you're getting emotionally <laughs> charged up or you might ruin a relationship that's really powerful business relationship because yeah. it's some emotional stuff going on in there and some all of that is how we react how you react to the situation and what you're taught a lot is to suppress what's going on to stay in the game in the moment and make sure everything wraps up well but what if you can access more mental clarity during that what if you can access more awareness of what the people that you're working with or working for will need so you can better anticipate their needs and do a better job in creating those business relationships and expanding your business, mm -hmm. right? To do that, we need to actually undo the lessons we had around emotions and around energy because our subconscious mind, that's where the powerhouse of the mind is. Mm -hmm. it's, it's an emotional mind. And it's a energy base. It's a it's a non logical mind. So if you try to use the logical mind, this is why you're exhausted at the end of the day mentally, because your logical mind is trying to keep everything in check. What if you didn't have to? Mm -hmm. What if you can actually get your mind to work more for you, and you can act and be more dis even more yeah. decisive and more clear? Absolutely. And one of the things that I've seen is that a lot of people that are having financial issues, they are mentally stressed, and sometimes they don't know where it's coming from. And that's what I wanted to bring Mike here to tell you that, you know, if you spend a little bit of time and effort in understanding where is that stress coming from and eliminating it, all of it is going to come. Like your health is going to be better. Your finances are going to be better. Everything else is kind of balanced and you will feel at the end of the day, peace of mind is what you want, right? Yeah. And if I can share real quick, because I know yeah. we're going to get into that, that time uh, to, to close up. But uh, a lot of us, we, we tend to say, you know what, I need to focus on my business because okay. right now everything is going crazy and money is tight. You know, you, if you'll hear other people say something similar. However, okay. when you're able to get the tools you need to be able to be more clear in, in your mind, to be have to have better access to your energy and be more balanced, you make better decisions. Uh -huh. It's actually the best time. Well, it's always the best time. It, it's actually equally as important, even if things are going rough right now, yeah. to invest in that for yourself because you need the clarity and the access to the clarity that you can get by doing this. Yeah. The productivity yeah. will go up. Uh, as you know, when I started the business, I was like very not focus my mm -hmm. focus it was everywhere it was sparse everywhere so when you don't have that mental focus it's more difficult to accomplish things it's mm -hmm. more difficult to get more business it's more difficult to do anything so yeah we have to really step back sometimes you have to go like one step back to move forward two or three steps right absolutely absolutely totally agree and there's so much we can talk about right when it comes to that I'll leave it at that. I think, uh, you know, we think that the stress is coming from not enough money and maybe it is, but really there's a, there's something, there could be something deeper than that. Oh, uh, absolutely. There's so many people that are entrepreneurs can feel very relaxed when there's little money, just because they know that 
that the right pieces are in play mm -hmm. and they're getting the timing right. Uh, so there's 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 more to it. So I'll, I'll leave it at that. I'll leave it, you know, whoever's watching, I'm going to leave it at that so you can kind of ponder that for yourself. Yeah, absolutely. Well, Mike, I really appreciate you coming here because this is so like a, so, such an insight, not only from the point of view of telling people how you did uh, the transition from corporate world to being an entrepreneur, but also how you're making a transition from your mental stress to remove it and have some tools and also how you can help people do that. So to all those who don't know Mike, take the time to take a look at his profile and uh, contact him. He, he'll be able to help you if you have anything that is a challenge that you cannot see. That is the thing, right? Challenges are coming from things that we don't see. And that's why it's, it's, it's a bigger challenge to face it, to remove it, and to move forward. So with that alone, I thank you very much, Mike, um, and appreciate your, your comments and everything else. And for everyone, we'll see you next week with another fantastic wealth story. Thank you, Araceli. Thank you, everyone. Okay, bye, Mike.